Um, so now saved in this file somewhere, if we just um, open the AutoCAD drawing again, um, which you don't need to do if you don't have AutoCAD, of course you, you don't need to do this, because you can just check it, you can just check it in the scene. But looking at the AutoCAD drawing again, it's got a driveway here with a spot height at six meters at the top, and it's coming down to four meters here, this bottom edge down here. Um, so we're going to create that, and we're going to create that using this spline here. So we'll hide everything else. I'll look at this in the top viewport and we'll choose those segments there. I'm just going to detach those as a copy. I'm not going to bother giving it a name because I'm lazy and also because um, we're going to attach this to something else in a minute so it's not worth it. Um, We'll just weld in those uh, a line at the top there, so that we've got a closed, we've got a closed spline. When we've got a closed spline, we can use a face extrude modifier to convert it to a polygon, or a number of polygons. Now we want to set this at the um, the correct heights according to that AutoCAD plan. Um, so we'd use an FFD modifier to do that and I have a feeling this won't work. The reason is because we've got a face extrude here. It doesn't it doesn't seem to work very well unless the object you're trying to um, you're trying to deform has some thickness. So uh, that's a little bit disappointing. But we can get around that, it's not a big deal. Now we're going to be rendering this in the uh, an orthographic top view, the camera, but it's the same as a top view. So we'll put a shell on this driveway object and as long as we put it at the bottom it doesn't matter what it is. It's not going to affect the heights at the top. Oops, sorry. So that's going to work just fine. So now if we apply the FFD modifier to it and we want to set the top of the driveway to 6 meters and the bottom of the driveway to 4 meters and I'm going to check that I don't yeah, 4 meters at the bottom 6 meters at the top there we go and now I'm going to unhide the terrain object and underneath the UV map with the gradient, but above the edit mesh, which was uh, just altering that corner. I'm going to put another edit mesh, and then go to element mode, choose all of the terrain, and delete it. And then I'm going to attach that driveway, which didn't have a material on it, so it took the material from Terrain 001, and also because it has mapping above it, it will now be mapped um, with the mapping uh, that was on there originally. So if we look at this in the camera view and uh, we render it, I think we get a bright red background, which we don't want. So we'll just we'll change that back to a black background and render it. And we have um, the driveway with the correct displacement gradient applied to it. So we'll save that in the project folder and we'll call it displacement02. And again, I'm going to save it as a target with an alpha channel. didn't delete, uh, I did delete the mesh, but I only deleted it on that edit mesh level there, so I can always go back 
um, the, to the original one there. Um, unhide displaced mesh, O1. Which, remember, is being displaced over this map here. So if we open the material editor, we drag that over to an empty slot as an instance. I'm going to change it from bitmap to a composite, but I'm going to keep that old bitmap as a submap. And then I'm going to add a new layer, and that layer is going to be a bitmap, and I'm going to choose displacement 02. And you can see it has immediately cut that out of um, the terrain. And this point here will be at 4 meters, and this point here will be at 6 meters. Now, this is a big advantage that this displaced mesh method has over the terrain object because it has a lot of things that I can quickly change now. I can turn off that alteration, the, um, the landscaping we've, we've done. So, as it were, this is the site before anybody did any building there or any plan building there, and this is what they're going to have to cut out to put the driveway in. I can color correct that map so I can tweak it which could be quite useful you might think well maybe that's working better I don't know we'll have to see a bit later on when we've got the house in um, so you've got some adjustments there you've also got I mean, we're using contour data that was uh, it took um, photogrammetically. Photo I have confused myself there. It was photogrammetry, though, which cap uh, captured that original um, contour data there. So we kind of want that to be accurate. But if if you weren't bothered about that, you know, you can then you can quickly change the di the displacement of your of your terrain. Um, and whilst we're doing that, if I just show you with the edges on. You'll see in the top you get a nice consistent sort of mesh density, but it's, it is getting stretched when you look at it in the side viewport. So if you had a, uh, we, we don't need to do it w w with the um, with our scene, but if if you if you did have quite a an extreme displacement there, and you were using I don't know perhaps um, V-ray displacement to put a rock texture on there which would which would actually I find work better with a, um, a fairly consistent mesh you could put a, a subdivide on there and that would keep you know that would keep the mesh a little more constant which you might find useful but like I said in this case we're not di we're not displacing it that much just eight meters we don't need to bother doing that um, so the other advantage is you can go, you can you can turn it all off. You can go back down to the plane. You can make this twice as dense. Um, you can change. change the size here for example if you needed to fit it within something else um, I think it's just it's basically a lot more flexible than the um, terrain compound object and of course we're just using two layers here but what we're going to be doing a bit later on is um, layering on different um, uh, alterations to the terrain we're going to be doing all of that in the material editor and um, what I often use it for at the office is for trying out different options. So you can you can show them this is with it off, this is with it on. You can you can have a number of different options there that you can show people. All right. So I think the next stage will be to bring um, Xref in the um, 
the model of the, the house that's going on here um, and then see what other alterations need to be made to this.